Hospital. Nicholas Robinson was the third victim of the fire in the house in Ennardale Road. Mrs. Muriel Ewings and her foster daughter, six-year-old Sarah, both died in the blaze. Mr. Robinson was dragged from the blazing building and was being treated in the burns unit at Newcastle General Hospital but he died last night. The cause of the fire is still a mystery. Police and fire officers have been investigating and now forensic experts have been called in. Police on the Isle of Man are still holding eight people under the Prevention of Terrorism Act, but they're refusing to say where the people are from and why they're being questioned. Their arrests are understood to have been made in simultaneous police raids on several addresses of Ramsey at about 5.30 a.m. yesterday. Armed officers bust in after breaking down doors. A number of people were arrested in a small guest house where local people say Irishmen have been lodging for some weeks. Cumbria Police have been carrying out house-to-house -house inquiries in Longtown today after an attempted robbery in a Securica van last night. Three men tried to hold up the van between Carlisle and Longtown at Hopesyke Wood on the A7. However, they were beaten off by the security guards. The men were in a stolen red cotina, which was seen in Longtown yesterday. A police spokesman said they are carrying out extensive inquiries in Longtown and they are appealing for witnesses. Police are investigating a stabbing incident early today at Wicktown in southwest Scotland. A man is assisting with inquiries and a report is to go to the Procurator Fiscal at Stranraal. Three cars were badly damaged and a garden hedge destroyed in an accident involving a lorry in Dumfries this morning. The accident happened in Annan Road carrying the A75 traffic through the town. The three cars were all parked in the roadway near Noble Hill in Dumfries. Police say their inquiries into the incident are continuing. There's been a warning that sheep farming may have to be abandoned in some moorland areas of Northumberland because of changes in financial help to farmers from the government and common market. It means that some of the poorest land would fall out of production altogether and revert to a state of wilderness. Cornet Bobby Brown and his last Michelle McQuaid led a colourful cavalcade on the riding of the marches at Annan this morning. They toured the ancient boundaries on a 15-mile journey which came to a climax in the town's high street. The ceremonies have been causing delays to traffic on the A75 Gretna to Stranra Road, and motorists are being advised by police to use the alternative route through Lockerbie and to bypass Annan. And finally, a look at the weather prospects. The whole region will have brighter sun spells and some showers. Winds will be moderate south-southwesterly and temperatures will reach a maximum of only 19 degrees centigrade, that's 66 degrees Fahrenheit. And the outlook for the weekend remaining unsettled. That's the news and weather this afternoon. Looking ahead to 12 o'clock this morning on the border and we look at the recovery from recession in the steel industry and find out what happened to the jobs as we join Anthony Wilson for Job Watch. At half past twelve, we find out what links a small town in the Scottish borders with Hong Kong, 10,000 miles away. The answer, Kashmir. Join Christian Diamond for the China Connection, our borderland. At one o'clock, we report on food production and farming outlook. And at half past one, we keep you up to date with the latest border news. At 1.35, our cartoon. At 1.40, Link, which looks at speech impediments. And at two o'clock, Tony Benn is the guest at Revelations. That's followed by our Sunday afternoon matinee. Programs for Sunday. Now at the border, we head for St. Andrew's Church in Plymouth for our morning worship. <laughs> 